All right, so this is probably going to be a pretty quick Blender video. I just wanted to go over constraints inside of Blender and how we can work with them. And I also wanna show a really helpful plugin that just makes this a whole lot easier. So I've got this scene set up here with these three sort of drums. And basically what we wanna have is we wanna have this small drum at the top, the small cylinder attached to this first drum and you can see it's rotating. So we wanna have it rotating, following the drum. And then once it hits the second drum, it needs to attach and switch its constraint to the middle drum. And then we move forward, further down the line. And then finally we need to attach it to the other drum. So this is a bit more of a kind of complex constraint setup that you might run into when you're animating. You can think of also running into a situation like this where maybe your character is holding a, a tennis ball or something and they're throwing it from one hand to the other. So that would mean you would need the ball attached to the first hand and then it needs to actually throw in the air. So that would need to detach from the hand it's throwing from and then it will need to switch constraints to the opposite hand. So this is kind of a very similar process to something like that, it's just set up uh, on these drums instead. So the first thing that we wanna do is select the top cylinder. And I wanna come over here to constraints and we wanna to go to the add object constraint. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you're actually working with a character rig with bones, you will have a separate bone constraint property here that you would need to actually add the constraint in. In this case, these are objects, so we're working with the object constraint, but that's something to keep in mind if you are working with a character rig. So I'm gonna go to object constraint, and then I'm gonna choose child of. So this is a constraint very similar to something like Maya's parent constraint. So I'm gonna choose that. And now we just need to choose the target. So what do we actually want this cylinder to follow? We want it to follow this uh, first drum here. So we'll just go to target, We'll choose the dropper and we'll pick the cylinder. So now we've got this blue cylinder following the larger one. So it's attached there and kind of following that drum. Now, one thing that I do really like about Blender's constraints versus Maya's constraints is that you can actually just start animating this constrained object and it will still follow the, the object that it's actually constrained to. So if you're working in Maya and you're working with like a parent constraint, once you actually constrain that object or control to where it needs to be, if you actually try to animate the control that have, has a constraint on it, it's going to snap back to its original constrained position where it's in world space. So if you've got something constrained and you try to do any type of animation, it's going to snap to where it was constrained. So that means you would have to turn the constraint off anytime you wanna do any animation on that control, which becomes a really big hassle. So in Blender, what we can actually do is we have this object constraint and I can just start throwing in some keyframes in here. So I will, I've got auto key on, so I'll just go ahead and maybe move the cylinder up on frame one, and you can see it's still following along. Let's go to like frame eight, we'll move the cylinder down. It's now animating, but it's still following the other cylinder. So we can just very freely just start adding keyframes to this object and still have it stay constrained to our main drum here. So this is really helpful in a situation where maybe you've got a character holding a sword and the character is swinging the sword around. So in some instances, maybe the hand might need to do a bit of an adjustment on that sword, or maybe it needs to actually let go of the sword for a quick moment and then grab back on. In Maya, you would have to disable the constraint, animate what you want and re-enable it, which means you've got to work with making sure the frame before and the frame after those constraints are enabled or disabled actually match up. But in Blender, we can just very freely animate how we want and it's still going to follow along, which is great. So next thing what we want to do is actually have it constrained to the second cylinder here. So we'll just say right around 23 is where we actually want to have this constrained. So what I'm going to do is go to frame 22 and I'm going to hit this button right here, which adds a keyframe to the influence. So this allows us to actually turn the constraint on or off. And then I wanna to jump to frame 23 and I wanna set the influence to zero. Now, before I actually set this influence to zero, there's actually a different way we need to go about this. So if we say at 23, at frame 23, we want the cylinder to be exactly where it's at, but we just wanna disable the constraint. So if we change the influence just to zero, it's going to snap back to its original constraint position. So this constraint's gonna be turned off, but it's not where we basically want it. So I'm gonna undo that. And instead, we need to hit this X button. So this X button disables the constraint, but you can see it also keeps the transformation. So it keeps the, the cylinder where it's at, but it'll disable the constraint. So I'll go ahead and hit the X button. And then I wanna hit this little button right here, which adds a keyframe to that. 
to make sure we have a keyframe locked there. Now, if I go back to frame 22, this kind of messes up the rest of the constraint before that. Now, an easy way to fix this is let's just hit this set inverse. You can see it just corrects the constraint here. So it's gonna pop it back to where it was on frame 22. So now we have the cylinder following the first drum, hits frame 23, the constraint is disabled. So if we want this cylinder to follow the second drum, what we need to do is go down to object constraint. We'll add a new child of constraint and you can see we're just stacking these. And now we want to choose this cylinder. All right, and I wanna set a keyframe for the influence at a value of one here. So I'm gonna hit the key there to set a keyframe and then I'm gonna to go to frame 22 and I actually wanna disable that. So I'm gonna set a keyframe there. So at frame 22, the second constraint that we added is set to zero at frame 22 and then at frame 23, it's turned back on. So now it's gonna follow that second constraint, which is exactly what we want. So now we've got this switching between the two objects. And it's just a similar process to how you would work with the next drum. So you would add an, another constraint, you would adjust the influence on the second constraint that we added, and then add another child of constraint in there and have it basically switch between these. So this is the sort of manual method for setting up constraints in a bit more of a complex situation like this, working with the child of constraint. But there is a plugin in Blender that makes this process a whole lot easier. So what I've done here is just opened up the exact same scene we're in, but we're starting fresh and we want the exact same thing to happen. So we want this blue cylinder to follow along each cylinder. Once it hits the next one, it needs to attach to that one. So let's go up here to edit preferences and go to add-ons and we wanna search for dynamic and then you can see we have animation dynamic parent. And I'm gonna make sure to actually link this add-on in the description so you guys can download it yourself. It's a completely free add-on, so I'll just hit the plus button to add that in there. And you can see it'll be added to our side panel here. So this makes the process really, really easy. So all we need to do for this is first select our main cylinder here, and then select the blue cylinder. And then under the dynamic parent menu here, we're just gonna hit create. And it's going to add this new constraint for us and you can see it's now attached to it. So what's great about this add-on is that it's still working with Blender's constraints. It's just doing all the influence turning off and turning back on and stacking your constraints for us. So all we have to do is hit one button and then this add-on worries about actually adding the keyframes for switching things on and off. So let's actually show that here. Let's go to frame 23 where we were before and, and all we need to do now is just hit this disable button and you can see it's added the keyframes for us and it's adjusted the influence value. It made sure that we kept our actual transformations where the cylinder is at when we need it disabled. So now you can see it just follows along at frame 23, the constraint is disabled. And then we wanna select the middle cylinder, shift select the blue cylinder, and then we'll hit create. And it's gonna stack a new constraint there for us. And then it's gonna follow along at frame 23. And then we'll just do that again for this last cylinder. So you can see how quickly we're able to set up these constraints. It's much faster than just having to manually animate all the influences on and off and then stacking your constraints. So you can see it kind of moves through the mesh. So we'll just say around 65 is fine. So we'll go ahead and disable, all right? And then at frame 65, we want to enable a new constraint for this last cylinder. So we're gonna select the main drum here, shift select the blue cylinder, hit create. And again, it's stacking everything for us. It's adding the keyframes we need for when we want to disable it and enable it and it's that easy and we can just see this playing through here. So you can see how much faster it is to use this dynamic parent option if you're working with any type of constraints inside of Blender. Again, you can see how helpful this would be if you are animating something more complex like a character, maybe throwing a tennis ball from one hand to the other. So hopefully this video was helpful and if it was, please leave a like and comment if you have any suggestions for any uh, future tutorials to do on the channel. So thanks for watching.